What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. Okay, I wanted to talk about nodes. Well, really, I wanted to talk about SPS, but why I am starting to do the math on potentially getting another node. Now we are getting close to the end of August. Actually, that's really not true at all. It's only August 12th on the date that I'm recording this, but we, it feels like we're getting close to the end of August, or maybe I just can't wait. And what we know is that SPS rewards will go live for nodes by the end of August. So within the next couple of weeks here, we can expect these uh, we can expect these rewards to go live, whether or not the uh, the actual node software is ready to go. Now. What I'm looking at is what the real question is. Maybe what I'll title the video is what what do I want to do with my SPS, right? Because there's several options uh, that all offer quite decent returns. Now we'll start with the highest numbers, uh, at least at this point in time, and that is going to be your pools here. The the uh, let's see SPS. ETH, SPS BNB, and SPS Swap.Hive are each still three figures. So 121%, 115%, and 102%. Again, I say this, and I want to make sure that I repeat this every single time. It's not, you shouldn't be chasing APRs, especially when it comes to um, liquidity pools. But I bring it up because, again, this is this is the current reality of where we live in. And this is gonna, this is it, right? Like, this is what the rewards are. Now, if the values of SPS go up higher over time, or even ETH, BNB, or Swap.Hive, these, these could actually increase, right? Because it's based on the investment that you made in at that time. So these numbers are going to fluctuate over time. And if you're bullish on SPS, which I am, and I'm also bullish on several of the other coins here, then it's not necessarily a bad thing to go into them. It's just, that's what you get, right? Whatever the APR is there. And if a ton more liquidity comes in, that's going to get split out between all of those other accounts. Now, on the other hand, uh, let's actually go over to Peak Monsters here and we can actually see the SPS staking is getting you roughly 29%, 29.5%, whereas the node licenses down here are getting you roughly 57%. Now, the node licenses are about to add something of value to them, and this is why I'm considering it, right? I, I worked out the math just very quickly, and if you want, I'll, uh, I'll do it right here again for you. But there are going to be, let's see, 3.75 million SPS available for nodes in general, right? But 90% of that is going to go out to node license holders. So you're going to be splitting the 3.375 million SPS per month. Um, we, we are almost at 3,200. We're 18 licenses away from 3,200. So I'm just using that as my baseline right now. Oops. That's one too many zeros. So this would get you roughly a thousand fifty four SPS per month. Divide that by 30 days. It's 35 SPS per day times the 0.075 price that SPS is kind of hovering at. So that gets you 2.63 US dollars. And you could buy a node today using vouchers for 1,715. Uh, 1, so we divide that by 1,715. That's your daily percentage rate. You multiply it by 365 to get an additional 56% APR. You add that into the 57.63 and all of a sudden, oh, whoops, uh, minus 57.63 plus 0.5763. And all of a sudden you're looking at 113% APR on node licenses, which make them almost almost as appealing, right? Based on based on what you're getting. Now with this, you're getting paid out in vouchers as well as SPS. So if you want to be close to the money printer on both of those items, it may not be a bad thing to consider, but keep in mind that pool is significantly lower than getting into uh, the pool of SPS. I should say is significantly lower than getting into um, getting into the the liquidity pools. Although that pool is only SPS, and you don't have exposure to both vouchers and SPS, but you do have exposure to Ethereum and BNB, right? So we're we're getting kind of all over the place here. Now, when it comes to Oh, simple, simple old just staking your SPS. Right now, you're getting a 17.92% return from SPS paid out in SPS. And then you're also getting an additional 11% return from vouchers. Now, if vouchers increase in price, then that increases the APR here. But it also increases the APR of uh, the node licenses. So that's something to keep in mind. 
what we can't really, what we can't calculate and even like fathom at this point, oh, fathom we can, but we can't like even estimate at this point is the amount of value that you'll be getting airdropped to you from GLS, the Genesis League soccer game that the team is launching in October. So there is this kind of unknown added APR that will come onto this. And while, here's the thing, while I think it could be a significant amount, I don't know how high that is. I don't know how high that pushes the price of SPS. I don't know how high that pushes the price of vouchers necessarily, if vouchers will be involved. We do know that vouchers are going to be involved with Rift Watchers, which is happening within the next two months. There's going to be promo card as well for Splinterfest in the next two months. So there's so many things that are up in the air, but I'm just trying to share with you guys kind of a, a little brain dump here of how I'm looking at each of these different options, right? And there's there's three total that I, I would consider allocating capital to. So you have the liquidity pools, the no licenses, and SPS. Now, I think this has the most hype, but also the most interesting potential for return, right? Which is why I've been stacking and staking as much SPS as I can. But what I am curious about when it comes to node licenses is that this is going to jump up to be relatively comparable to where many of the where where many of the uh, liquidity pools are at. Plus, you get exposure to vouchers and uh, v- vouchers as well as a reward token. And then you know the the idea behind node licenses is that they they should go up in value over time as more and more people buy into them. Now, do they have the same kind of upside as SPS? If you're going to be you know buying a seventy hundred $1,700 worth of SPS right now, SPS is seven and a half cents. Where do you think that could go? You know, it, it could be a while before we sell out to a point where vouchers or, um, or node licenses, I forgot the tiers, but you know, where they're selling for like $20,000. And you know, the team obviously will want to make sure that SPS is at a point where that's enticing for people to still be buying at $20,000. But you know, that's, that's a 10 X, um, Again, uh, sorry, I, I shouldn't say that that's a 10x because we could we could hit 75 cents SPS before we hit you know twenty thousand uh, dollar notes. Again, I'm not saying that any of these as price predictions. I'm just saying that those are the types of returns that you'd be looking at from holding the actual asset, not even the returns in terms of rewards, but holding holding the asset. the The big question mark for me, and kind of why another node is is on my radar, and I'll, I'll end with this, is because if the team does follow the Gala Games model and they want to reward node holders, there may be additional rewards given out to people who have nodes. Now, I need to go back and listen to the town hall again to find where Matt said it, but there was something even along the lines of like, you know, as people who stake SPS, maybe node holders, maybe even people who buy Chaos Legion packs, right? So I don't know what, you know, I, again, we don't have any of the details when it comes to that. But as of this point in time, I I own one license, and I guess I own a share of of another license through my guild. And while I know that this isn't going to be in the cards for everybody, right? Seventeen hundred dollars to invest is 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 a lot in, in a speculative crypto game, right? Uh, let alone if you if you want to get cards. Part of me is like, well, I should be leveling up my deck right now, and I could take that money and probably probably be at least somewhat competitive in diamond if not maxed out well i i wouldn't be able to max out with that much i'd still need a lot more but the point that i'm trying to say is that i kind of want to have exposure to potentially sell a license in the future right if the if licenses go nuts it's kind of the idea of having oh well if i have a second one then i don't feel bad letting it go right uh but the idea that this could jump in apr and pr- pretty much almost double in uh, in less than a month's time really just a couple weeks time here is enticing for me and again it's just something that i'm considering and i wanted to lay the numbers out for you guys as i'm not saying that any of this is what you should do or what is the best thing to do i'm just saying that these are all the things that i'm considering so since i put it out there i would actually love to get your advice what would you do in this situation what are you looking at where are you allocating capital are you still going heavy into the liquidity pools are you just staking as much sps for G- for the gls airdrop are you considering getting uh, a node license or another node license based on the information we have today would love to have that conversation or continue that conversation with you guys in the comments below so i will catch you all in the next video and i will see you around the game take care